Alright hi everyone, now Property Limbras is back with our episode 2 of the Investor Series. Now uh, we're going to bring across a huge range of uh, topics that is going to add value to you. Alright, let's go. Uh, wealth management and money installment at one point you hit the time to select the right property to buy. 1KM. 1KM. Alright, so there are actually four factors that we think uh, is important to understand before you even um, go ahead to invest in your first property investment or even your second property investment as well. Um, mainly to understand about the property market scene right now in year 2019 in Singapore, uh, prepping your eligibility and uh, of course factors that might affect your investment decision as well as some of the factors to note uh, to, in order to maintain this property investment in the mid to long term approach. But today, probably what we want to do is we want to talk about the second uh, factor which is prepping your eligibility. Right, so um, what is the impact of the TDSR measure that came in a couple of years back uh, that's set forth by our government uh, basically for prudency and to ensure that everybody do not over leverage and do not over commit into a property investment. Now this TDSR um, measure is basically the total debt servicing ratio, uh, meaning that uh, your income is taken into consideration on a certain uh, percentage level as well as your age plus your debt obligation uh, before you are eligible for a total loan quantum in order to invest and take a mortgage loan for a property itself. Now let's have a look at how does this impact your property investment decision, right? So for example, um, because every property before you want to invest, there's actually three criteria to look at. Number one will be you need to have your ready down payment. So if this is your first property, uh, you can loan a maximum of 75% loan, which means you need to prepare 25% in terms of down payment. You also need to have your buyer stamp duty ready. Now buyer stamp duty basically calculation is easy right now. If it's above a million, you just need to take 4% multiply by the price, less of 15,400. Now if it's less than a million, take 3% multiply by the price, less of 5,400. You get uh, the numbers. That's a formula basically for buyer stamp duty. Now second, which is actually to me is a very important factor is the proof of income for your mortgage loan. Now this uh, has to be prepped in advance because if you have everything else but you do not have a proof of income, if you are currently employed, um, then that would be an issue when you want to make a decision to invest in the property itself. Now of course the third thing is I think everybody has to have a clear ability and, and a property uh, portfolio plan uh, before you even invest because you need to be certain that you can actually hold the property in the mid to long term should the market not be favorable in your aspect. Now let's have a look at this uh, chart itself. Now this chart uh, has a few assumptions. Number one is assuming that you have the necessary down payment which is 25% down payment uh, to buy a $1 million property which is 250000 and of course you also have the buyer stamp duty uh, necessary to buy this property itself. Now if let's say you are in the age category of 35 years old, um, basically the easy calculation should take 65 less of your age that would be the maximum loan tenure that uh, the bank will loan you, the mortgage loan. Uh, of course, it's capped at a maximum of 30 years tenure. Now, right now, averagely, the monthly installment right here, uh, now in the closing to the second quarter of 2019, averagely is about 2.5% from various banks. So if you were to go ahead and invest uh, at age 35, this is what you'll be looking at. If you take the 30-year tenure loan, this is your monthly installment at $2,963 uh, estimated. But in order to qualify for this loan, assuming you have a car loan installment of about $1,000 a month, this is how much you need to have in terms of income, which is $7,500 per month in order to be able to loan close to the 75% mark. But let's have a look at the impact when you age. Now because age is a factor right now as the calculation method is based on 65 minus your age cap at 30 years, the older you get once you hit age 40, the lesser tenure that you can loan, installment increases but at the same time you need to be able to earn more in terms of monthly income assuming you still have a car loan of about $1,000 a month, you need a higher income to basically qualify for the same 
amount of loan as you age further. So let's assume you age another five years to age 45, your tenure lessens, your installment increases, and you need to be able to earn $9,000 in order to qualify for the 75% loan. So the impact actually is in terms of your monthly salary that it has to be strengthened. At the same time, your installment will increase because your tenure shortens in a sense. Now, what does this mean for you as a buyer? Of course, uh, what is important is that everybody wants to enter the property market at the right time, but because uh, time is something that we cannot buy back. So in terms of opportunity itself, sometimes some um, investors, they wait and they wait um, and um, there is a no end date technically speaking. So I would say that the right balance to enter into the property market will depend on your current age, your current income ability, as well as understanding the right property to enter into, whether the numbers make sense, does the rental you make sense, and various other factors that we're going to talk about. So hope that you enjoyed this episode too, where we talk about the impact of the TDSR measure. See you in the next episode.